in this uh, section we'll discuss the third type of movement that is nastic movement nastic movements are in response to external stimuli so it is due to external stimulus and these are turgor movements that means it is due to endo or exosmosis so these are called turgor movements and as they are turgor movements they are reversible because if water goes into the cell the cell would become turgid and if water comes out that is if exosmosis takes place then the cell will become normal or flaccid so these are reversible movements one more thing about these uh, type of movements that they are non directional we saw in tropic movements in response to light it can be positively phototropic that means if it is moving towards light or it could be negatively phototropic here there is no such direction specified so these are non directional and as we said that these are due to external stimuli these stimuli could be of various types for example if light is the stimulus then that movement is known as photonastic movement and this movement is seen in noon flowers in noon flowers the uh, flowers open up as the sunlight intensity increases and that is why it is known as photonastic movement there is one more uh, type of movement here which is known as nictinastic movement and these movements are also known as sleep movements and sleep movement is that the flowers they close down as the sunlight falls down that is intensity goes low or it gets darker the example is albizia in albizia we see nictinastic movement the third is temperature is the stimulus and then it is known as thermonastic movement here the stimulus is temperature and this type of movement is seen in case of flowers of oxalis in oxalis the flowers bloom or open when temperature rises so flowers open as temperature increases so depending upon the stimulus these plants they show these movements the most important in this category is thegmonastic or seismonastic movement this is in response to touch in response to touch and the plant in which we see this is commonly known as touch me not plant and its scientific name is mimosa pudica this is the most important and maximum times the questions which are asked are based on thigmonastic or seismonastic movement now we will understand what exactly happens and what kind of movements are seen when we are talking of touch me not plant showing thigmonastic or seismonastic movement so let us understand that process now the details of this movement that is thigmonastic or seismonastic movements in mimosa were given by two scientists snow and bose so they explain the complete process 
and that process it was in mimosa pudica that is touch me not plant before we take this movement let us understand what exactly is the structure of the leaves in case of this plant in this case the leaves they have swollen base that means the base is swollen and then is the leaf part and these leaves they occur or they grow in pairs so this is one leaf here is another pair and all of them are having swollen base and this swollen base is known as pulvinus it is the swollen base of the leaf now according to a snow and bows in response to touch the first thing that happens is the stimulus and the stimulus is touch so when the plant or the leaf or any part is touched then a chemical is released so once the plant receives this stimulus a chemical is released and this chemical could be a hormone also then this chemical from whichever place the stimulus has been released moves through xylem and phloem through xylem and phloem that is through conductive tissue it reaches up to pulvinus so if we try to understand what is happening is suppose this is the place where the stimulus is received by the plant and from this place the chemical will be released and this chemical will travel through the conducting tissue and would come to the pulvinus not only of this it will go through let me change the color of this say so this is the stem to which this leaves are attached and this chemical would go through this part also to this pulvinus this pulvinus and here that means it is going to go to all leaf bases that means that chemical has reached the base of the leaf that is pulvinus now the cells of the pulvinus which are on the inner side that means we are talking of the cells which are towards the branch on which these leaves are attached these cells they undergo exosmosis so we will write that inner cells of pulvinus undergo exosmosis now how suddenly this exosmosis is going to start we will enlarge this pulvinus to understand what exactly is happening here so say this is the enlarged pulvinus and this is the place where this pulvinus is attached these are the cells of pulvinus and we are drawing all these cells so that we understand what is going to happen we said when the stimulus reaches so from here the stimulus or the chemical came up to the cells the inner cells that means these cells they are going to undergo exosmosis but for that water has to move out so what they do is these cells they actively pump potassium ions out so now potassium ions from these cells are pumped into the cells of the outer side that means by pumping these potassium ions out these cells have become hypotonic as compared to the outer cells which after receiving these potassium ions have become hypertonic and we know water moves from 
hypotonic to hypertonic. That means water will come out of these inner cells into the outer cells. Or in other words, we can say that these cells are undergoing exoosmosis. And if exoosmosis takes place in these cells, these cells will become flaccid. So after exoosmosis, the inner cells become flaccid. Flaccid means they have lost that water and because of that, they are no longer turgid. Turgid cells are stretched, whereas the flaccid cells, they are little loose. So if this is happening in both the pulvina, imagine these two as the leaves and the cells of pulvinus here and here, they undergo exoosmosis because of which these cells are going to become loose, whereas the outer cells are going to stretch. So when they stretch, they are going to push this structure or say they are going to push it here and because these structures are becoming flaccid, they will be turning inwards. So what is going to happen is these two leaves, they will start moving closer to each other or towards the central axis. And this is what is known as the movement or closing of leaf is actually the movement. So these two leaves, they will move like this and these two will move towards inner side. So after this movement, these leaves are going to come closer to each other. And that is what is the seismonastic or thigmonastic movement, which is seen in case of touch me not. We will understand this one more time quickly so that we can understand how this exosmosis is taking place. Stimulus is touch. As soon as we touch the leaf or any part of the plant, a chemical is produced from that place. This chemical is transported through conducting tissue that is xylem and phloem to the pulvinus. Pulvinus is the swollen base of the leaf of that plant, that is mimosa. Once the chemical has reached the pulvinus, the inner cells, and we have enlarged it here, so the inner cells actively lose potassium ions to the outer cells. So from here, potassium ions are lost. As a result of which, the inner cells, they become hypotonic because the concentration is going to decrease. And outer cells, which are receiving these potassium ions, there the concentration increases. That means outer cells become hypertonic. And we know water moves from hypotonic solution to hypertonic. So from inner cells, the water molecules, they are going to move out. That means exosmosis is going to take place. Because of exosmosis, these cells, they become flaccid. And because of which, these flaccid cells, they sort of collapse. Not collapse, but actually they become a little loose and lumpy. Because of which the leaves, they come closer. But outer cells, they are getting stretched because of water moving in them. So inner cells undergo exoosmosis and outer cells undergo endoosmosis. So here they are becoming flaccid, outer cells are becoming turgid. These cells are getting loose, inner cells, and outer cells are getting stretched. And because of which, these two leaves, they are going to get closer to each other. These two will also come closer to each other. And the movement would be seen. And this is the movement which we call thigmonastic or seismonastic movement. The leaves are going to remain in this position for some time. This is known as the reaction time. If we leave it after this movement has uh, taken place, in about 8 to 10 minutes, these cells or these inner cells, they will regain the water. That means they will take these potassium ions back because of which now their concentration will increase and they will undergo endoosmosis. Because of which they will also become turgid and as they become turgid they will start to stretch. And as they stretch the leaves which are closer they will again open up. But for that we need to give it time. 
and in that time period the reverse takes place that means the inner cells which became flaccid they will regain water they will become turgid and the leaves will open up so this is what is the complete process and this was explained by snow and bows and these movements are because of external stimuli so now we are done with all different types of movements which which are shown by uh, the plants in response to various internal or external stimuli